Two out of the car guy, two wheels in the front, two wheels in the back. And you're here with the master, Nate the Great. I didn't expect him to call himself a master. But this is our first podcast. You're on the mic with Galbos. Gia, Gia. You know, we try something different, man. This is our first podcast. We don't really know what to do. We know what we want to talk about, but we argue a lot. Oh, my God. He has different views and different opinions than I do. But we're going to go ahead and make it work. We're going to give you guys some free game because that's what I'm all about. Don't forget, we got merch. Gabbo shirts, $35.99. You know? Get one. Get one. Definitely support the team. And, um, yo, we bump heads like crazy. But um, we, we be on the same page. But, yo, we like two Rams, man. Just Matt, Matt, Matt. But you know, at the end of the day, man, we we both. Yo, why you talking like you rapping with the nail on it? I should be rapping. rapping, man. Keep I rapping to the... I used to have so many. Yo, I bought so many CDs of rappers. Like, yo, I I, I should have been one. Even people tell me that, like, you know, way way back, like, damn, man, yo, you you got so many joints, you should have took off, and I'm. I ain't never heard you freestyle. I'm the guy that's gonna tell you you suck. But shit, I met Nate. How many years ago did I meet you? Five years ago. Wow. Five years ago, we were both working at a moving company. All my sons moving in storage. I was the assistant ops, and he was one of my weekend guys. Yes, man. Professional mover, head um, driver. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Sad part is I might be going back to that because I need the extra money, you know. Life happens, bro. This entrepreneurial shit is, is not easy. You're going to fail. If you're not okay being broke and trying things, it's never going to work. You know, I've been hustling cars 13 years now. And I just started doing good. I just got my own office. I just got a little lot. I just got all that, man. I've been doing this for 13 years. When we met, he was working at Pepsi, and that's why we clicked, because I was at Pepsi for 10 years. What'd you do at Pepsi? I was there nine years, you know what I mean? I was driver first, you know, delivering the product, and I'm humping, doing my thing, and I worked my way up the sales rep, man, and, you know, consider myself one of the best salesmen out there, you know? Hey, a salesman at Pepsi ain't like a salesman selling cars. All you do, you're a fucking inventory control specialist. I started as a merch. I was making good money selling cars at a used car dealership, but I wanted a 401k. I wanted a pension. I wanted all that cacapooey shit that you think you need when you get older. But, yo, that shit's a fucking, it's a scam. It's a scam. How you feel about your shit? I mean, you do need the insurance. I mean, it's crazy. I never used it in nine years. But um, it's just, yo, when, when something happens, and it always happens when you ain't got it. You know, that's the, the crazy thing about it. Yeah, it sucks. You know, it costs a lot of money. You never use it, but then when you need it, you ain't got it no more. So, I'm I don't know. Though. I'm 35. I've, I've never been to the doctor. I didn't, I've never needed insurance. I paid. It had good rates. I got braces, but then when I left Pepsi, he they stopped paying. no manual labor, so. I was a sales rep. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, on that, but then on your other joints, you ain't got no, you ain't got no labor. Yes, because, yo, there's two types of people in the world, right? People who work from the neck up and people who work from the neck down. Truth be told, I can read. I don't need to be digging ditches. He's up and I'm down. Yeah, you know, he struggled. He thought there was 350 days in the month, <laughs> in the year. My bad. He was like, yo, Rob, you know, that's 350 days in the year. I got to get it. <laughs> I said, what country are you live in? In America, we 365 over here, Papa. But you know what it is? <laughs> Call me off guard with that. You know what I mean? But... You know what I mean? Rob, go ahead, man. It's, all it's his diet. I'm telling you. Yo, what'd you eat walking in? Yo, you got to see the breakfast this man had. What'd you eat? Yo, I, I had to bust something down quick, dog. I just got up, ran over here to his spot. You know what I mean? You see his spot. She looking good. But he ain't had nothing to eat. I'm, I'm coming a whole hour and some change away. Like, yo, had some fruit or some something on the table. He ain't got nothing. You know why he like, fucked I'm, up? I'm trying to stay right. I'm like, dog, well, I'm 10 years above you. I, you know? Keep pushing, but I'm I'm kind of solid. Yo, he fucked up. I'm on vacation uh, two days ago, and he sent me a picture of cheese on on TikTok, and cheese shredded, bro. Nah, 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 so wait, I'm wait, like, yeah, hey, I'm hold like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's back up. I ain't sent him no pictures of no nigga plain and simple. We gonna, we gonna stop that. He says, yo, he, yo, he gets busy and da da da, and one of his joints popped up. His new joints is that you know he gonna start doing the gym joint joint. So I sent it to him. So I sent it to him. Say, yo, he on some, you know what I mean. You know, if you want to rock with it, he already rocking. But for some reason, when you send something to it, you know, it comes up with a picture. Like, oh, when I seen that, I made a mistake. I was like, oh, this shit is kind of crazy. You know, being that he automatically going in on me right now for that. But, Man, know, I'm sitting in my hotel room, lounging Man. up. Me and my lady eating good. I open up my TikTok message, and it's Nate. And it's a dude with his shirt off. I'm like, damn, that's cheese. 
I put my food right down. That's it. I'm on starvation mode. He hit me up. Hey, you got breakfast at the office? I said, nah, we on some cheese shit right now. We finna get the muscles up. This motherfucker walk in with 7-Eleven chicken wings and a Mountain Dew. Burnt chicken at that. It's not even chicken. Yeah, I mean, it's a chicken substitute. Yeah. It's knee and shoulder. You know what I'm saying? It's the worst kind of chicken wings. <laughs> but, you know, like, I, like we were saying, you know, we both worked at Pepsi and we left to try bigger and better things. I was at Pepsi, no lie, 10 years, right? I started off as a merch. I was making $14 an hour as a merchandiser. I moved up to relief, right? There was no real hourly rate for relief. I was making between fifteen and 1700 a week take home. Then I got promoted to sales rep. And I was making between twelve and fifteen hundred a week for ten years. The money never changed for me. I don't know. Did it change for you? <laughs> nah, he hit it on the button. I mean, it, it moves. It moves up a little bit. I mean, it's not bad. It's not a bad company. It's an excellent company. I mean, I just if you want to do other things with your time, you know, you gotta get out and go. Other than that, you know, because it do it sucks up a lot of your time. And you know, you really sit down and you think about it. You put a lot of time in. So, you know, what you're doing. We work at 55 hours. That's like the, yeah. the company standard. 55 hours. More. But my thing is, look, when I started Pepsi, you could buy a Corolla for 14000 new. When I left Pepsi, a Corolla's 20000 new. My paycheck was the same, give or take a 1000 on a year. Yo, how do you grow your family, you know? How do you introduce a kid into th this world knowing you, you don't make enough money? Like, how do you do it? And you're at a great company, and you're not going to get promoted. That's the fact. If you're not a campus hire, you're not coming in right out of college, you're not getting, you're not getting more money, man. You're just not. It takes a very long time to get promoted. Very long. And you got a lot of people trying to get a promoted. Like, yo, you got a lot. It's a big company. It's a lot of people, a lot of competition. You got to do a lot of ass kissing. But that's when I started because I was selling cars. And then I got into Pepsi. And my bread got right. Because you're selling cars at a dealership. Shit, your, your money get real funny sometimes. You got ups and downs. The dealership pays you strictly commission. So it got hard. But that's what got me into flipping cars, right? And then we're going to fast forward a little bit. And I met Nate because he, he came to the moving company. And a lot of the guys, they just weren't up to par communication-wise. You couldn't talk to him. But he had some intelligence to him. And he saw me selling my plastic. I would come to all my sons, and I had the edible nerd ropes, and I was selling them online. I, you know, I made 40000 in three months. And then he asked me about it, and I put him on. What were you selling first? Ooh, I was selling grinders. <clears throat> I was selling grinders. You know, you put, you know, you put whatever you want to put in. You, you know, put weed you in that motherfucker. Tobacco in it. Let's put it like that. You put tobacco in it. Put tobacco the only at yeah, the but smoke the shop. Thing is, what I had was the, you know, the grinders is, you know, you put it in your cell phone and it, it work off your cell phone. So you don't need no battery, no nothing. And, you know, it was a hit, man. Now, you know, I did a good, uh, I'd say about a good 6,000 off of it. But for the grinders, you know, break it down. I can't break down math quick like he can, but, you know, I got him for a good. He made a little paper. What, what, what I'm trying to get at is. Yo, a lot of people ask you, hey, how do you get money? What do you do? How do you do this? Look, I started the dealership with 6000 I done sent out 500 pamphlets because I, I got it on TikTok. You can hit my email. I'll send them to you. But not, you ain't going to do it. You ain't going to do it. Yo, when I was selling plastic, all my friends, all my customers, I was selling weed at the time too. All my customers, yo, how you making so much money on Amazon? And I'm not shy. I'll tell you, this is what I'm doing. He's the only motherfucker. I probably told 100 people. That actually went and tried. And he, yo, he bought some dumb shit in my opinion. He bought some shit. Remember that shit you bought a dry yeah, dog? I bought a dry dog. I sold like joint. <clears throat> you know, you, um, if you got a little dog, after you wash him, you know, you put him in his bag. And what it, uh, blow dry, whoo, blows up. Dry the dog off, man. It was a hit too. Um, but did good on that. I did, I made about 2000 off of selling those. You know, I put in about. Five hundred dollars. I made two thousand dollars off that project. But when you got in the business, was there a guarantee that I said, "Yo, for sure, you're gonna make money"? Nah, nah, nah. Definitely no. You was yo. You go with at your own expense, and you know you gotta maneuver how you gotta maneuver, and you know take your time. But everything don't go the way you think it's gonna go. It takes time. Yo, everything's a risk, right? What what finds me? Oh, I'm fascinated. I walk into Walmart, right, and I will see a stock clerk putting up shit on the shelf. He got a what looks like a two thousand dollar chain. It could be fake. $500 sneakers. They could be fake too. But yo, you got enough money to get fresh to go to work. You can invest in yourself, right? When I started selling plastic online, I spent, my first order was $100. And I flipped it. Mm. 
Then I put it on a credit card. Boom. Let me get that. Then I flipped that. And yo, before you know it, I had $40,000 in three months. Because I was willing to skip the dinners, to skip the haircut. Sometimes now I skip the haircut if I ain't got the money for it. Right? The nice clothes. Yo, you impressing nobody. That's nobody give a fuck. But that's what I was about to say too, yo. Listen. What he's saying is right, but yo, it's hard. Don't, don't, don't miss the part. It's hard. You got to put in some work. Like, you got to, you know, strategize where you're going to go, how you going to get it off, and how you going to talk to people. Otherwise, even if you do the online thing, the online thing is hard too. You know, I just started trying to do some online business. You know, I was leaning a lot on him because, you know, he nice with it. But then he go at me like, yo, stop calling me. You know what I mean? Figure it out. And, you know, I get mad because, you know, he got it. You know, he already know. But at the end of the day, I got to get it myself. I got to sit down and learn the things, too. Nah, don't make it seem like I don't help you. Know, you. The problem you know, with Nate, he, this this dude here, he's delusional. He'll see a TikTok video. Rob, we got to do an e-commerce business. That's it. I found a way to get rich. Listen, I've failed at so many businesses that I know for sure the one thing you ain't never going to do is get rich quick unless you hit the lotto or you get an inheritance. And if you got an inheritance, you probably kiss an ass to your auntie or your grandma. You know, you put in work there. That's but true. Look. That's true. That's true. But yo, it's money e commerce. All right, what is e commerce? Watch this. E commerce is um, it's a platform where you sell merchandise at. You know, you got to sign up for the program. You know, what program? Uh, you got well, not the program. You got to sign up for. Shopify or one of those things that. So you create a website. All right, cool. We, so, ha, we're creating a website. Yeah. These are the questions entrepreneurs don't ask themselves. Yo, he is financially illiterate, and we no, gonna I, talk about that. You, you <laughs> see what I'm saying? That's what I love this guy. You gotta create your website. You know, once you do that, but you gotta pay for it. You know, pay for whatever plan you gonna pay for. So after you pay for whatever plan you pay for, you gotta set up your um, either PayPal, one of the other things. But one thing you know, if you don't know about it, is you got to know about your 1099 and, you know, put money away for taxes and things like that. But on that note, you know, you, then you find whatever you want to sell and then you sell it. You know, it depends See, on this how is many the people, problem. It depends on how many people want the product. You know, it's not a get rich fast thing, but it's. Definitely a job this, this is the problem I have with TikTok and YouTube. And when you meet a motherfucker, hey, bro, just start an online website. You're going to get paid. Okay, what am I going to sell? Where am I going to get it from? Who's going to buy it, right? These are things nobody asks. They're like, yo, I'm just going to go do it. Don't just do shit. That's stupid, right? He's got the right idea, but the wrong concept. Look, you that's get to a website. Hold up. That's set up in a platform. It's set up in a platform for things for you to look for to sell. What platform? The website that you're going on. The website, the, website, the, website? That, the website that you sign up for, doing Shopify, whatever, whatever, it has a channel to where you click on it and you find what products you want to... So you're talking about website. being a drop shipper? Correct. Okay, how are you going to drive traffic to your website? You have to do... You have to do more... Um, you got to do more uh, posts. You got to do more um, advertising. It sounds no, like you no living on the hope. No different if you're doing it. If you're already doing it, why wouldn't you? You know, if you already... Got a TikTok. You already got Instagram. You already got Facebook. I just got TikTok, dog. I'm 42 years old, and he just told me to get TikTok. I was like, I don't have none of this. So if I'm going to do that, then yeah, I might as well start trying to make something off of it. You know, there's people in there that's been on TikTok that got TikTok since 15 years and talking and running their mouth. Why haven't you done that? You got some type of people on you. You know, you got some type of people following you and looking at your page. You get a good. 10,000 people who buy it, you know, you make a little decent money. You know, because I think it's a moral out. thing, right? Like, one, you guys see what I mean why I don't like talking to him about an e-commerce? He went into left field. He don't know what he's going to sell. He don't know where he's going to get it from. He don't know who, who going to sell it to. That's not a good business model. You know what he's good? Yo, he was one of the best movers I ever had. He can start a moving company, right? We got the formula for that. We got that down. We know how to find the clients and everything. Great in transportation. He's got a CDL. How long you got your CDL? Ooh, had that for a good. He's had it for a long time. He can't. Yeah. He should have made up a number. He should have just lied. I would have said ten yeah. years, ten or seven years is a good lie, right? <laughs> but you know, you watch these people on TikTok. Oh, I'm selling a seminar. I'm selling a Discord. I'm selling information. Yo, you're selling that because what you're really doing, you're not making money. Look, I'll disappear off TikTok. I got a big TikTok following, not huge, but you know, it's decent. 
but I'll disappear for two or three days. Why? Because I really make money selling cars. Like it's not a gimmick for me. So me giving you information on how to do it, it doesn't, it's free. I don't care. I want you to join the industry, right? Because look, it's like a catch 22 for me. One, if you do good, you're going to remember that I helped you get there. And if I need a favor or I want to team up, one, I know you have integrity. You've done good. Two, I know you're smart. You've done good. Three, you've done good, right? It's always nice to have a team of people. I know people in the whole United States. It's nice. Look, my sister lives in Cali. She wants to help her friend buy a car. If I knew a dealer in Cali, yo, what's up? It's Rob. Hey, I got this person. I'm going to send them to you because I trust you. Then, on the other hand, if you do bad, it makes me look better. If you're a scumbag and you change miles, I do better. If you sell kakapui, I do better, right? He I, has a point. He has a point. But I didn't go left field. He has a point. But then again, if you hear what he's saying, he has a strong following. He got a strong following. A good 30,000 people. And I've never sold nothing on TikTok. Never. Never sold anything. But I don't advertise a car or nothing. But he can advertise things. But for what? I don't need that business. He just don't want to. But he can. You see what I'm saying? It's a difference. So, me, 30,000 followers, yes. He's yes, selling everything. I am going to advertise things. Yeah, there's a lot of important things out there. For you to get you you buying it from walmart you're buying it from um but let's Target, keep it one thousand from circuit city you buying it from wherever you buying it from yo we all go to the mall you've been to the mall before right of course you ever been to the mall with your lady yes i don't know about you but this is what my lady do right we walking in the mall you know the ladies that sell the flat irons okay my lady immediately gets behind me and gets to the other side okay your lady do that no so when, when they say hey can i do your hair what does she say nah i'm good does she ever tell you damn i hate that no. You guys enjoy that? No, I enjoy it, but don't pay it no mind. But it's that's different than selling something. No, no, no. It's not sales and sales, right? What I'm trying to get at is everywhere we go, somebody's trying to sell us something. Is it, You don't find that annoying just a little bit? No. It's a paycheck. Hey, we're different. Some people, yes. We're some, different. Some people, yo. Plenty of people is making money off of Yo, I don't wear my jewelry to the mall no more because they always want to clean it. I don't wear sneakers to the mall no more because they always want to clean them. So you're going to stop doing what you yeah. want because everybody want to do something? I don't want to be bothered. Why go out? Why I don't want to be... Why are you going out? Brother, I'm going to house. Yo, look. Yo, I just got back from Nashville. I went to Hattie B's Hot Chicken, right? I ordered chicken, right? They're like, what kind of chicken? Oh, God. All right, I want white meat. All right, how do you want to cook? Oh, God. I just want it cooked. What kind of sauce? You know what? I don't want nothing. It's too much for me. I can't process all these questions. Everybody's trying to get it. I broke down. I gave up. I just walked away. <laughs> That's it. I don't want nothing. That's how I live, bro. That's, yeah. I can't, you know, I can't do that. You know what I, mean? I live in a constant state of chaos because, yo, my mind is always thinking. I'm always doing something when I don't know what I should be doing. So I don't want to sell things because I don't want to be the guy that I hate. I try to be who I love, right? I love a guy who's honest. I love a guy who's quiet. I love a motherfucker who won't bother you. So I don't want to get on TikTok. Hey, guys, you see this light bulb? Oops. Yo, look, on TikTok, it's two ninety nine. Look how much light it's giving my room. <laughs> what? If you need a light bulb, cell phone, boop, 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 it's at the crib already. Versus, they're going to go out and get it anyway. So either way, they're they going to get it. He I just... I'm he not just a don't want to be resembled as, you know, Cheesy. every time you see him selling something, selling something. Selling it's something. annoying. Yo, we all got the Herbalife friends, right? You don't got no... Oh, he doesn't... It's not annoying. Bro. It's not annoying You tried all. Herbalife? Nah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get skinny or I'm trying to gain weight. It does both. What? <laughs> or a real estate friend sends you listings every day. Hey, you ready to buy a new house? You ready? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's no different than I got the solar dude calling me every... I got solar dudes calling me all the time. And I ain't messing with them until somebody cuts me a check for like ten or fifteen thousand dollars. I just don't like selling shit. That's and then not on my top thing. of that, they looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, oh, ain't nobody gonna do that, sis. So ain't nobody gonna put their solar panel on my roof. At the end of the day, you need me. <laughs> so what you got people knocking on your door to say your solar I got panel? People knocking. I got people calling. At the end of the day, if you ain't cutting me a check out of your pocket, you're not putting a solar on my roof. So you really entertain those phone calls all day long. You're very confident. I would hang right up. Yeah, very. All day long, and oh, nobody's gonna do that. Well, nobody will get their pedals on my roof. At the end of the day, I gotta have electricity in my house, whether it's from FPL or whether it's from you. I gotta have it. So, therefore, with your option, you're gonna pay me. Otherwise, I keep doing what I'm doing. But that's a little different than selling. It's like this I, um, nah, selling, selling. 
Selling no, is selling. That's that, that's a little different. You don't have to. You're entertaining them, right? You're on the opposite side of the sale. I'm talking about the, being the person that's selling. Like for instance, um, business was bad last, um, the past three weeks in the car business. Everybody knows it's bad. So I'm like, yo, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I want to learn how to market better. So I, 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 I typed in marketing classes near me. Full Sail University comes up. I apply. Yo, I get 800 calls. Ugh. Don't try to sell me on nothing. You should have just texted me the price. That's all I wanted to know. And that's what I mean. I just don't like dealing with salespeople. So I don't want to be a salesman. It don't work like that. But he don't, he's been a salesman. Ten I've years. never been a salesman. So what you was doing at Pepsi? I was just entering buttons. Tell him what you do at Pepsi. What do we really do? Well, I was a salesman. No, he I was, was a fucking... Monster. He was a, oh my God, nobody want to cover his route. He was the trash, trash land. The hardest, the hardest, Yo, the hardest program. The they called him Captain Out of Date. The hardest program. The Pepper king Pepper of not rotating. Up, is the Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper incentive is the hardest selling joint in Pepsi. What's in the Dr. Pepper incentive? You, you, you reach a certain number, you get tickets to go to see the football game. The oh, NCAA championship. Yes. First class, five star hotels. Everything all inclusive. Dr. Pepper blows a check on this one. Did you win? Of course. You win? Of course. I didn't know that. Yes, because I'm the man. What'd you do when you got back with all them credits? <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> it's all about selling. Yo, we've all, all seen Baby all Boy. There's a difference between the salesman and the shyster. Shyster right here. Yo, the Dr. Pepper incentive, what it is, is right. You got to grow your number from last year. Right, so let's say you sold 400 cases. To beat your number, you gotta sell 800 cases. If you're not 200 plus percent, you out the door. So that means he just hit the button. Not on <laughs> that, not even, that's one of them. But the second one is that you have to beat everybody in your district. By growth. Everybody in your district. I was there that year, I didn't win. You know why, because I care. Everybody in your district. Because I care. Remember that. But remember, I care about people. Listen, this is what Monster. you do at Pepsi. You get a phone, you Monster. go, oh, you're missing this, you're missing this, you're, uh, thank you, have a nice day. This is motherfuckers, can I drop a shipper? A shipper's a little cardboard cutout, you know, you walk into the store, you see a bunch of hot ass Pepsi to the right. Ain't nobody buying off that. It's all out of date anyway. Look at the cap colors. You got it's blue about caps about in the front, white caps here. Them shit is out of date. Yo, you, are you smelling the bees? Yo? No, that's just facts. It but, is though, but yo, but what I was saying earlier is, right, um, everybody fails at business. I started my TikTok and I got lucky. The reason I started it is because my cousin is similar to Nate, right? Not my retarded cousin that be lying and who fucking failed at detailing because he said I put him out of business. But I got a really smart cousin. He's a genius. Works at the University of Miami. Um, he's a financial something there. You know, he's got his degree. But watching YouTube and TikTok, is like, yo, Rob, I see this dude. For five thousand dollars, I can go ahead and get a Discord. I can join his WhatsApp group text, and he's gonna teach me how to buy houses in Detroit and sectionate them out, bro. I'm gonna get rich, and he said I don't need no money, and I automatically knew it was a scam, right? So my man Nate the Great, he started a trucking company with similar information, but I'm gonna let him talk about that. How would right. it go? Gee, well, nah, it's similar, but yo, it's more with a company. It's you know what I mean? The companies told me everything. I, I asked them everything. You know, I even asked them when it was. Okay, so look, hold on. Let's, let's walk through this. In. No, no, this is important. This is important. Home. Slow down. This is important. So, you, you got a job at the time, correct? Correct. Where are you working? Pepsi. What were you making a year? Uh, 72. All right, he making, you should have said 75. It's a better number. All right, he making $75,000 a year at Pepsi, right? Why were you looking for something different? Oh, you got to grow, man. More money. So you just wanted more money. <laughs> more money. You gotta grow. You gotta do. Uh, you know, other things. Plus, it's on my own business. That's why. What. What's your rich life? What? You what would? You, what do you aspire to be? You want to be rich? You want to own your own business? You want free? What do you want out of this? I just want to be well off. I want to still just you know be able to do whatever I want to do. But seventy five grand is it well off? Nah. The average American makes fifty thousand. I mean, seventy five. You know, seventy five grand is good money. You know, but um. Yo, the average American makes fifty thousand a year. You're making twenty five thousand dollars or more. You're not well off. Nah, no. So what is well off to you? Uh, well off is you know. Um, and I know he's good on, with it money. All depends on, it all depends on what you want in your bank account. No, no, no. But I'm asking you. We're asking your opinion. You I know he's good with money. He's very frugal. You know, I don't want to say cheap, but then mortgage. Well, you know, that, that just depends. You know, well off is is 
what you think? What, what do you need to make a year to be happy? Uh, oof, man. From the numbers that they were telling me, I was no, 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 no. Make, From the numbers in your mind, everybody has a number. They were telling me two hundred thousand. What do you need? What would you happy? So, so two hundred thousand, I would have been good. Would you be happy? A hundred thousand. Hundred thousand is good too. So which one is good? Uh, two hundred thousand is better. Of, of course, a million is better than two hundred, right? Yeah. But if, if when you depends, when you depends, set out, it all depends on what field you're going in. Look, for instance, I make six hundred dollars a week, right? Because my goal isn't money. My goal is freedom. I love spending time with my family. I love picking my kids up from school. I love going to the gym. So my rich life isn't money. My rich life is time. I want time. So you obviously want money, correct? Correct. I want money. I so want what's money. your number? There's a number, Papa. Come on. That's what I'm saying. A good, you know. Two hundred. That, that's your number. That's your number. It just depends on what field you go in. It doesn't matter what field do you, you know, want. If I, you I, chasing I, the bag. I, I could go in the field that makes one hundred fifty thousand. I'm good with that. I oh. could go in the field. For so look, when you left Pepsi, what number was enticing? I guess it was two hundred thousand. Right. Two hundred thousand. All right. Yes. So you all right? Elaborate on this. You saw an advertisement that you'll make two hundred thousand a year. Correct. Where'd you see this advertisement? Craigslist. Okay. And indeed. Craigslist. I mean, I, yo. And indeed. All right, come on, come on. Tell it's me more trucking, about it. It's a trucking company. So what did they tell? What was the, um, the description of the, the, the They've been around for... Uh, woof, Fuck it, what's their name? 30 years. Um, Century Express. Century Express. So Century Express had an ad saying, hey, yo, you left crumbs on my table, bro. What's wrong with you? Cause, that ain't even chicken crumbs, though. You didn't let me finish. I was, I was in a rush. Because, yo, he can't eat on camera. He's the... Yeah, man, I can't eat a camera, I can't chew gum on trimmer. <laughs> what can I do? You hey, know what that's the people, the Come people on, are like, man, okay. okay. see what happens when you got nice things, man. You, you want to be a madman. Yo, but anyway, yeah. Century had an ad. You first saw it on Craigslist or first saw it on Indeed? I seen it on Craigslist first. What did it say? I can't remember what it says, but it says, yo, you Give us an idea. Between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand. So, boom, I was like, So, yeah, minimum, they said, is 200000 yeah, you can gross two hundred. Yeah, two hundred. What was the requirements? You gotta buy. You have. You gotta have your own um tractor. What kind? You gotta be two thousand and better. Whatever tractor you got. Year two thousand. Yeah, you gotta be two thousand or better. What's a tractor? Tractor is uh how you said two four. An eighteen wheeler. Yeah, ten wheeler. Cause you know. So that's like the thing that pulls the big trailers. Correct. So you need the front half of it, not the trailer. Yes. Okay, so you buy a big truck, a CDL truck. Yeah. Okay. You know, you buy a truck, you know, so you're your own operator. But so, in actuality, it's like you're half and half with them. So did you interview with them before you bought your truck, or did you just go buy a truck? Nah, I, um, first I see if I qualify for the drive. You know, you got to fill out an application, see if you qualify this, this, this. So I passed all of that qualified. Hold on, hold on. You're skipping over a lot of parts. Okay. You apply for the job, somebody calls you. Yes. You go to one office, or you do it on the phone? I do it on the phone. Okay, what, what kind of questions did they ask you? Uh, no, they didn't ask no questions. They just, they just... See. You interviewed, right? Yeah. What was it, more of a conversation? More of um, that I got the job, that I qualified. So they called you just to say, hey, you're qualified. They didn't even yes, know who you were. qualified, you know, um, when you're going to start. What made you qualify? Um, you always got to have an excellent record, no accidents. Um, so basically, your CDL and experience qualified you. Correct. Okay. You know, so um, after that, so um, when they told me that, so then I, you know, but before that, I asked them, I called them and asked them all the um, questions, you know, how much you make a week. Um, when you asked them that, what was their response? Their response was, you know, 4000 3500 a week after take home. And I'm like, I asked them, are you sure? And I'm speaking to an HR person. And she Did you ask them positive? Yeah, she's actually telling me what people is bringing home. You know, she you know told me when they get paid from paid from this, um, from here to here. So let's just say, uh, I think it started from. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was like Saturday the third day or something like that. It was like a, a weird. So what's just they said buy your truck. You gonna make between thirty five hundred and four thousand. Yeah. Now, do you have expenses or are they covering expenses? Nah, see that's what I thought with with expenses. So expenses is like you know the gas. Um, is the gas. Pretty We're tearing your vehicle, tolls, parking, all that's yours. Yeah, all that's mine. Except for the... Uh, maintenance, you know, your shit break down, that's on you, right? What about insurance? insurance? They cover insurance? No. So you I need commercial insurance. auto. Yeah. What's commercial auto running on a truck like that? Oof, they was charging 170 a week. So you're talking almost $800 a month insurance Correct. for that truck. Yeah. Okay. Correct. How much did it cost to fill up? Uh, 
My truck was only like six hundred dollars to fill up. Only six hundred dollars. It was a day cab. It was a day cab. So yo, before you make a check, how much was your truck? Uh, twenty grand. A twenty thousand dollar truck, six hundred in fuel. That's before you made a single dollar, correct? Correct. All right. Then what happens? Uh, what you mean? So you get the truck, right? You bought the truck because they told you you were gonna yeah, make this you, money. You buy the truck. You, you quit your job. Um, yeah. So you just said Pepsi, yo. Yeah. Nah, Gaga, boo! You nah, get the fuck out of here. Hold up, I never shit on a job. You know what I mean? I put my two weeks in, and I left. You always, I always leave on a good term. You know a lot. Of fuck people. that, leaving on a good term. You don't go back. You, you don't got go you don't, Nah, you never know if you gonna go back. So always leave on a good note. And um. So you put in your two weeks. Left, hopped on that. Copy. Did you buy your truck before you quit, or did you quit then buy your truck? Nah, I bought my truck before I quit. Okay. So I bought my truck before I quit. Where'd you get twenty grand from? You gotta have good people like yo man um so like you said i was a sales rep you know i know a lot of people you know and um yo out of respect you know a lot of people help you out you know if you're honest and you trustworthy so are you saying somebody lent you the money so somebody let me um 10 grand i had 10 so somebody let me no yeah somebody let me 10 grand, nice. I had more than 10 grand. so you when you quit you only had ten thousand dollars in your account no i had more than ten thousand how much did you have uh, i had about Fucking say a number, dude. Uh, let's see. I had 25. So, so you took a huge risk with 25000 in your account. Yeah. It's commendable. That's some entrepreneurial shit. Yeah. You was ready to go get it. Yeah. Definitely. So you was willing to bet on yourself. Somebody else was like, yo, they'll bet on himself. I'll bet on him too. Correct. What was his return on the 10000 Uh, His return was um, 20 grand back. $20,000? Yep. You're nuts. So it's 10. It's 10 and Why didn't you just finance the it's truck? It's 10 and 10 back. Ah oh, man, I bought the truck off of Craigslist. You can't find. I mean, finance. But why didn't you go finance one? You it would have saved you a ton of money. Oh, um, because you know if you buy, if you buy something low, you know you might not have too many problems. You know you never know you might get lucky. But like yo, you, you financing you, something in the if I would have financed something in the job the job didn't go oof. But it's the same concept, right? Yo, you borrowed ten grand to pay back ten grand. Yo, you could have borrowed fifty thousand with a decent interest rate and paid back sixty, and you would have been in a better spot. Yeah, but if the, and your truck probably would have come over. If the job crashed the way the job crashed, your credit's fucked anyway, right? I would have been paying hell. I, my credit's good. But I'm saying, like, yo, if you lose all your money, whether it's just you you borrowed money from a guy or you borrowed money from an institution, you're fucked somewhere. Yeah, but you fuck more. You know, I'd rather be fucked a little bit than fucked a lot. So you get the truck, you quit your job, now what's next? Oof. It's time to go to work. What are you hauling? Do they give you a contract saying you're going to make this kind of money? No. Nope. Yeah, no contract. No. Real yard. You know, if you know the real yard, you know the real yard. So, you know, it was a real yard. What does that mean? I don't know. I mean, they transfer um, containers. Okay, so you're moving containers from where to where? From the rail yard to anywhere in Florida. Okay, what's a rail yard? A rail yard is where the trains come in at. Oh, a train station. Speak to regular people, bro. A fucking mm -hmm. rail yard. Never heard that saying in my life. Crazy. All right, so you're moving containers. Yeah. And they're already on the flatbed and everything like that? You just got to hook and go? That's it, you know. All you got to do is hook and go. You know, the people at the rail yard takes them off the trains and then detach them to the um, trailer. So all they need to do is hook up and go. And how's the payment determined? Payment is determined on picking up the rail, making the delivery. All right, come on, let me hear it. You know? What do they pay you, mileage, weight? Oh, they pay you mileage. How much per mile? Uh, mm, that was a good, let's just say 57 cents a mile. And you thought that was a good deal for owner-operator? 57 cents. Yeah, 57 or, or high. It was something like that. Let's say 60 cents for argument's sake. You felt like that was good for owner-operator? See, I didn't think like that. I was thinking of the bigger picture, the 35 to 4 grand. You saw a number and you just I'm fucking new. lost it. I'm hopping in something new. So, boom, I ran with that. Okay, so you pick up your first load. What's next? Pick up the first load, first day. Uh, knock two loads out. Done. How much did you get paid on that? Did they pay you daily, weekly? How was the pay? You get paid every week. Okay. You get paid every week. So those two, the two, the two runs I did was six hundred dollars. 
Each? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 300 a piece. 300 a Owner operator here. Bought a $20,000 truck. Yeah. Just in fuel, he's at 600 yeah. Okay, so you covered your fuel. How much fuel did you have left? <laughs> about, uh, had probably about, about a quarter left. <laughs> so you burned through 80% of your fuel. Yeah. For six hundred dollars. Yeah. So you spent five hundred in gas to make six hundred. Yeah. I like that. I would do that. Okay. So then what? What happens? <laughs> what happens? So then you know, next day come, going to pick up another one. My truck break down. Okay. So your second day your truck break down. Second day truck break down. Boom. So what do you do then? Try to get it fixed. You know? Now let me ask you a question. You saw your first run was six hundred dollars. So you're probably going to make $600 a day, correct? Nah, because... What did you think you would make a day? It, it, it varies. It's not the day is just go by the week. You know, I mean, the more... No, but it's a daily thing. You're working daily. Yeah, but the more loads you pull... The but more what's the most you can do in a day? It all depends on how far you go. No, that's not true because... Yeah, because you can do two short runs and then you can do a long run. So you can do the two, you can do two short ones. That's an hour a piece. You know, six hundred dollars, then you could do one long one for six hundred dollars and come back. Uh, you at twelve hundred dollars. Fair enough. Okay. So, with that said, is that's how you can, you know, actually make up to the money that they portray and you can make up. But it seems a little difficult because you did two short runs for six hundred dollars, yeah. right? You spent almost four and change in fuel. Seems like a lot of work for a little bit of money. Even if you go farther, you're still going to be burning a lot of fuel. I'm pretty sure those containers are heavy, right? Oh, yeah, they're decent amount. I mean, well, you can't, you, you, you can't fight that out of it, but it's, I mean, it's, it's done. It might be a little bit off on the, on the fuel, but. But give or take, it's, it's easy it's, math. It's an older math. Yeah, it's, a, it's an older So you, 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 your, your second day, your truck break down. Yeah. Now, what happens with the load when your truck breaks down? Is it your responsibility to get it there? Of course, well, nah, they call somebody and, and they repossess it and somebody else takes it off. So you get nothing? Yeah, you get nothing. But even if you're 10 miles away? Yeah, even if you're 10 miles away, you get nothing. I didn't even have a, but I didn't have a trailer I was going to pick up, remember? Oh, okay. So I'm Bob Taylor, you know, without the trailer. I'm going to pick the trailer up. What's it called? Bob Taylor. Okay. You know, that's when you're driving without the trailer. So, you know, I went to pick up and my joint broke down, so. So you, you, your truck broke down, you had to get into a shop. How'd you find a shop? Ooh. You know, you, man, when you're in that field, you know, you know where you got to go. You know, you either call somebody roadside, look at it, see if it's an easy fix to get you back on the road to keep going. And if it don't, then you got to find a shop to go to. Yo, to veer off for a second, did you call the seller? Nah, I didn't call the seller. Why not? How, how long had you had the truck? I ain't had a truck no more than about, I say. Three weeks, if that? Not even three weeks, man. Probably. Three weeks, yeah, probably How much did you drive it, though, before it broke down? I ain't driving. You got to remember, I just bought it. I just bought it, parked it at the crib, wait till I got on, everything. I got my place and everything. Boom, and I'm gone. Damn, you know, I wish regular customers were like that. Yo, I'll sell a car, and a customer will call me because they caught a flat five days later. Hey, you know, I caught a flat. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. What do you want me to do? Or, hey, you know, it needs new windshield wipers. Yo, you've had the car for three weeks. You know, like, get the, what the fuck? Yo, my cousin called me two years later. Bruh, the truck needs windshield wipers, dog. Bruh, it's been two years. Your truck breaks all the way down. Yeah. And you don't call them. How much were the repairs? What was the problem? Oh, man. Oof. So many problems, man. That's, that's why I say yo, that industry is... Yo, it's nothing to play with, you know, it's... <laughs> but look, the lesson here is, right, yo, if you want to go and start your own business, you need to know what you don't know. And even though you're not going to know what you don't know, you need to figure that shit out. Yeah, because it gets tough. Yes. Yo, he didn't think it was going to break down. That was, you that never crossed your mind, did it? How much was the repair? Out of all said and done? Yeah. <laughs> out of all said and done, I'm, I'm coming out of the pocket $16,000. For a repair? Yeah. On a twenty thousand dollar truck? Why didn't you buy a new truck? <laughs> Sixteen grand. Then 
I could have went that way too, but then you got to start the process all over. So you what? You got to get another number, you got to get another this, number that. It's better to just fix what you got and keep going. How long were you doing it before you gave up? Oh, I was doing it. I did it six months to where, you know, one month, you know, ten. I, it, the money wasn't coming in regardless, but then I was just waiting, you know, see what's going on because you got to... You kept hoping for put better. Put time in to see if it gets better or whatever. And then, yo, know, one joint that just got even worse to where, yo, know, I seen like... <laughs> what was your best month? dollars when I seen two thousand dollars. I was out. I started looking for a job. And, you know, so your best man, month was what was your best month though? Uh, my best month was um, my best month was about five thousand dollars. It's not a bad month, but that's, that's after a horrible expenses. month. That's after expenses. When I was supposed to be making thirty five to four thousand dollars after. But this, a this is what I tell people all the time. Yo, there's no guarantee in business, right? People are going to tell you all the time, yo, you can make this. You should make this. When you see them ads on Indeed and Craigslist, between 80000 and $1 million, that shit's fake, fake as fuck. Yeah. If money was easy to be made, ain't nobody giving it away. Yeah. That's a fact because I don't need you, right? Look, truth be told, in his trucking thing, I got a little money in the bank, right? You're telling me I can make $4,000 a week driving a truck? I could pay someone like him $1,500 a week? They got to do nothing. But it ain't real like that. That Yo, this shit drives me nuts, right? You got all these motherfuckers on TikTok. This shit burns me. Yo, come to my seminar. I'm going to teach you how to flip cars and get rich. Motherfucker, you not rich. How you going to tell him not to, how he going to get rich? I still don't know how to. I sold over 200 cars last year. I ain't rich. You know what I'm saying? Shit, we made 400000 That's big facts. The business made 400000 I got a partner, right? So you talking that's 200 for him? 200 for me. No, Papa. We got a third partner named Uncle Sam. That motherfucker want his bread too. Yeah. You know, Uncle yeah. Sam want what? And then it, it, it works like this, right? So you got a business. Let me get comfortable. I'm about to rant on y'all motherfuckers. You got a business. You made 400000 right? You're like, damn, bro. Shit, I did three point something million in sales, blah, blah. Okay, you want to go buy a property. You go look at the property. Property, $1.5 million, right? You're like, okay, I can pay 4000 a month comfortably. Right, that won't put my business in jeopardy. So the mortgage will be four thousand, but it's a commercial mortgage, it's a little different. So you got a balloon payment, right? So you're like, all right, I can do that. They want three hundred thousand down. Now, mind you, we got four hundred thousand in the bank. Cool, four hundred thousand in the bank, right? But Uncle Sam said, hey, where my money at? Now, who cheats on their taxes? Let's be honest. Everybody who knows how. Yeah. If you know how. If you know how, you're if gonna you cheat know on your taxes. How, then you you gonna pay? Like I don't know. So I'll do his taxes for him. He ain't going to pay nothing. I got you. I don't worry about it. Shit. Nate the Great. I'll tell you his last name too. <laughs> I ain't so got to worry about it. IRS, going to check this motherfucker out. I was negative. Nah, but I, I, you know, I'm pretty good at taxes. I've done it my, almost my whole life by myself. Wow. But anyway, if you go and pay taxes on the money you made, you're talking 400000 let's say 20% for argument's sake. It's a lot of money because you didn't make a lot of money. Foreign is not a lot of money. It's not. But if you, you show all these write-offs, when you go to buy a property, they're going to say, hey, you can't afford it. So it's like a catch-22. If you want to buy a property, you need to show you made income. If you show you made income, you need to pay taxes, right? So look, these guys skipped the, the meat and potatoes of a business. He was led to believe he was going to make four racks a week. They didn't tell him, yo, but if your truck break down, that shit, $20,000 a repair. A good diesel mechanic, $300 an hour. An hour. It's going to take him six hours to tell you what's wrong with the fucking truck. It's going to take him an hour to pop that big-ass hood. You ever seen the hood? That shit. <laughs> Don't, God forbid, he's this tall. He's going to charge you for the ladder he stood on. You know what I mean? <laughs> that motherfucker got a big-ass, you know, you ever see a big-ass wrench? Yo, I got a little diesel mechanic. That motherfucker little. It take him 15 minutes to walk from the shop to the truck with the tool. You're charging me by the hour. Put all the tools on the floor. I'm going to run them to you, bro. Don't play with me, bro. I ain't got $300 an hour. <laughs> but that's a fact. They don't tell you this shit, right? Look, we buy and sell cars, right? That's I, I got a dealership. I got a dealership. He's here now. You know what I'm saying? This is my dealer's office. We got a little deal from Spotify, <laughs> but it wasn't enough to go buy a building and shit. Y'all might not even like our first episode, and they'll cut us. But anyway, I buy and sell cars. I sell a $5,000 car, right? I make... 500 to 1,000, maybe 1,500 if I'm lucky. They pay tax, tag, and title, right? So my bank account look healthy, right? You're talking about I put in 7,000 in my bank account. You're like, ooh, that's nice. No. 1,000 go to Uncle Sam, right? Then tag, the tag, there's four and change. Four and fucking change, 
right? And God forbid you don't pay your taxes as a dealer, your, your sales tax. Sales tax is different than earned income tax. Yo, they're going to take you to jail. That's theft. That's stealing. So, yo, when you listen to all these motherfuckers, this is what, yo, this is like my best friend right here. He gets me so mad because he has all these get rich quick schemes. Bing! There goes this fucking light bulb right there. That he doesn't look at the, they're like, yo, you're missing it. You're missing this part. Like his whole e-commerce thing. Yo, what are you going to sell? How are you going to drive business? What's your customer acquisition cost? Yo, he don't even think about that shit. How much is nah, it going to cost? I'm going to make it happen, though. So, you know what I mean? He's like, Rob got a TikTok. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> Rob well, just gonna post it on his TikTok. I'm gonna get rich. <laughs> no. See, yo, let me borrow the fence. He said, "Hell no, nah, you borrow nothing." So you know that's why I'm on here now. When I grow them out, but I'm gonna start it regardless. I'm gonna start it. You know what I mean? I'm make it happen. But you know, I'm yo know, like you said, man. The light bulb goes off. You know what I mean? For for multiple multiple things. You know, I run it across him. And he like bang 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 bang. It don't matter. One of them gonna hit. You know, one of these ideas gonna hit. You know, so yo, have you have you guys ever heard the saying? I've asked you before. Too stupid to fail. You ever heard it? Not me, but so I, I think one of my biggest curses in life that I'm extremely intelligent and it bothers me because I can see through the bullshit, right? So when he brings me an idea, I don't want to tell him every idea he has is stupid. But I have to, because that's my dog. What kind of friend would I be if I let him put together a dumbass idea? Now he done had some good ones, and I told him he got a good one now. You wanna talk about your good idea? Nah, I ain't talking about that. He thinks I'm always gonna steal an idea. I gotta, I gotta get that emotion. It's a good idea. It's not a great idea. But like, yo, yeah, yo, a lot of people come to me with their ideas on. Hey, I know I get dog, but you don't, you don't ask yourself these questions. Like one of my homeboys, he's like, bro, I got three hundred thousand. I'm gonna start a restaurant. I can sell food for six dollars a plate. I'm like, how much does it cost you to create that plate? I don't know. Shit, gotta be cheap. It's got to be. What What the fuck kind of answer is that? You need to know unit cost. How much does your rice cost you? How much does one cup of rice cost you to cook? Right? How much rice are you going to throw away? Because you can say you make, I don't know, 50 cups of rice, but you throw away 20. You know, all that shit count. You, do you ask yourself some questions when you got these ideas? Nah. No. So you just come up with the idea. Just come up with the idea and then try to, you know. Like, Keep going with it. Keep going with it. He had this idea. We're going to talk about the pool thing. And yo, he thought I was stupid. But I thought he was. I idea. liked it. So look, so it. he has a pool in his house. He's rich. I'm poor. I don't got a pool. <laughs> but he got a pool. So <laughs> what did you want to sell at your pool? Yo, so I wanted to do, um, I told him, yo, put some money together. Let's sell some um, chlorine, chlorine tablets. So you know, when you go to the store and you buy chlorine tablets, come in a bucket right so it comes in a bucket you know little one big one or big one, you know so however you know it can go from you know sixty dollars to a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars so what i was saying is you know let's find the uh, warehouse who distributes the chlorine let's put them in a big um uh, big uh you know the blue um container containers put them in a the blue containers and drop shipping at their house. So they don't never have to leave the house. You see what I'm saying? So we fill it up, we fill up the blue container up. Somebody orders one, drop it off, they don't never have to go to the um store and buy it again. He said he wasn't feeling that. So hear me out, right? He wants to buy how many things fit in a container? Uh, well the little it all depends. The little containers holds like about seven. How many are you trying to put? In a, in a big, in a, in a, in a big container, yeah. in a big blue container, yeah. shit, you can put probably about a good, oof, you can, if you fill it up right, you can put about, man, a good 200 in there, probably 300 in there. So let's say 300 for easy math, right? You want to drop a big blue container in somebody's house. Yeah. Full of chlorine tabs, right? Yeah. Okay. How much are you going to charge them initially to get it in there? Exactly. That's the part we have to figure out. So we have to first we have to find a warehouse that distributes the tablets because the tablets don't cost anything. If you find they cost tablets, something. They, if you if you can find them who distribute them, you can get them for a, a good price. Remember, you don't know. You, remember, you, you, I'm, paying, I'm paying seventy bucks for like six tablets. Mind you, this is the information I'm getting. As an investor, listen to this pitch. 
He doesn't know how much they cost. He doesn't know how much he's going to sell gotta help for. me out. I'm, I'm coming with the ideas. He got to put the other half in it. I don't want your ideas. I don't want anybody's ideas. <laughs> Yo, people don't get this, right? Like, I'm not somebody who has a lot of money, oh, but I'm someone who's able to contribute if a good idea rises, right? But yo, as an investor, listen, I watch a lot of Shark Tank. I want to be Mark Cuban. I want to be Mr. Wonderful. Yo, I don't give a fuck about your idea. You don't want to put it in. You don't no, want you, to put it in. You want to give me half an idea and me come up with the other half and the money. I'm, what I, sense I, I, does I'm that make? I'm coming up with the half and I'm coming with my half of money. I don't we even we have equal. a pool. We equal. No, but you got to... <laughs> you're right. We're equal because you got to have an idea and half the money. <laughs> but I don't want... I need a full idea and all the money. No. You see what I'm saying? That's the same thing with Shark Tank's being on. No. That's my point exactly. Yo, he they hates Shark Tank. Shark Tank's they the sit, best show in the world. They sit, they sit right here. You bring your idea, right? They go over it. They manifest it. If it's worth it, they jump into it because they can make it better than what it is. But it's already going in motion. It's already going in motion. But look, check so this out. putting no work into it. Yo, 50% of a million is better than 100% of nothing. And most of these motherfuckers that go on Shark Tank got nothing. Now, every now and then, no. you got the one off. Some of them. Some of, some of them. them. Every oh. now and then. All of them, all of them will go on Shark Tank. For a reason. Last one of them. For a reason. Listen, I'm a guy with a idea. Look, their idea is already in motion. I have a successful dealership at this point. Let me tell you something. I have a successful dealership, right? But I'm always looking for ways to make it better. I would give away. I would really give away a portion of my dealership for one, a good sum of money. Because I need that kickstart. I need, if somebody came to me and said, hey, I want to buy half your dealership, $3 million. I'll do it today. You know what that $3 million gets me? It gets me the property I want without a mortgage. Yes, but they know you have something to offer. That's Cor why they're giving you the money. But the same thing with Shark Tank. All these people have something to offer. Like, yes, so you, but you said they had nothing. No, 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 I didn't say that. I said they don't have a complete business. Like my business. They don't have a complete business. No, no, no. I don't have a complete need, business. They need help to elevate it further than what they want to do. I don't have a complete business. My business is halfway. I don't have a, I don't have a retail lot. I have... I have an office and I have parking. He has a complete business. Yeah, but 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 it's not big. It's not. It's not. It's not. But for he's somebody, missing it. But for somebody to invest in you, it's not. It's you not investable. All, you already. You already established. If you're not established, nobody's gonna give you money to do anything. Nobody's gonna give you a million dollars. You heard what he said? But he came to me with a fifty percent idea. Exactly, because I'm not established. He's not established. We will both be established. No, but I'm established here in my lane. Rob the car guy. Two yeah. in the front, two in the back. I'm here. Of course, and my, same thing with me. I got, you know, my vape joints jumping off. He won't tell y'all about it. I'm dying for him to give out information. Boom, 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 boom. Yo, he boom. He really booms vapes. And, um, but you know what's crazy? I work. I was I addicted to vapes. You know, and I work too. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you what kind of friend I got. I was addicted to vapes, right? And I'm like, yo, let me buy some vapes off you. He's like, nah, bro, I'll give them to you, my dog. I'm like, that's a good friend. I don't like shit for free, right? Now I go to his truck, he opened up the ten of them. He's like, bro, that's for you. I said, Oh my god, thank you. None of them work. This motherfucker gave me out of date vapes. Cat. They were they was out of date? Cat. They all fresh. Fresh nothing them since out of date. All fresh. And you don't even got the good ones. The best vapes are fumes. What's the best vapes? Yo, there's so many different ones. Like what's the best? There's no such thing as the best. It's all whatever you like, man. It's different type of flavors. That's a sales. Man. That's a, I'm bad at stuff, man. You know? Yo, when people try to buy cars from me, I fuck up the sale because I tell them my opinion. They'll come look at my Hyundai and be like, yo, what's the best car? What do you think? I don't know. Um, Toyota. What? <laughs> yo, <straight laughs> yo, somebody will hit me up on, on, on Marketplace. They'll be like, yo, I like your Mazda, bro. You know, if you were buying a car, this is a real message. If you were buying a car for your daughter, what would you buy? I said, my daughter, personally, I'd buy her a big-ass truck just in case she got into an accident or a Toyota. I would never buy my daughter a Mazda. <laughs> I'm a fucking left me on scene. But it'd be hard, right? Because you go to all, you can't buy yourself a Toyota, man. They shit expensive, right? But if it's for my kid, it's a little different. I don't really, you know, money is something, but it ain't everything when it comes to reliability. I will buy this Mazda, but she don't need a car right now. Yeah, see, he's a good-ass salesman, right? That's why he'll come to me confident with a half idea. But I got an idea for us to get rich. I just don't know nothing about it. Straight up. Nah, but, you know, we're going to talk a lot. Our podcast, we're going to drop every week. Um, I'm going to try to get everything on by Mondays, right? So we'll record on a Saturday, get it posted on by Monday. I got to send it to the engineer. We're going to talk about a lot of like our days, what we go through. You know, I'm a successful small dealer. When I say small, I hover around 10 to 20 cars at any given time, right? I always have about, I got a $500,000 buying budget. 
right? But that's a floor plan. I have AFC, I have Next Gear Capital. Those are my floor plan companies. I started my dealership with $6,000. What $6,000 buys you, you get an office and three parking spaces, and that allows you to get your dealer's license. We had a little bit of money in the bank to help, but then, you know, with good credit, and, and if you have good bank statements, our first line of credit was 50000 50,000 buys you a lot of cars. Then it's up to 100,000. And now we're 250, 250. Um, we just got bank financing on. So, you know, I'm going to teach you guys and we're going to walk through all this. This motherfucker Nate is a true hustler. Eventually, I'm going to get him to open up on how he made all this money selling so, vapes. So, since we're speaking on that, so I just seen a dude talking about the dealer's license and whatever, whatever. So, most likely he know about it. So, there's one part about the dealer's license dude was referencing he said there's one that you can sell cars but the other would be a license that you can only sell from um business to business also. business to business so i'm finna you know what i mean elaborate on that because i want to i think i want to do that because that's a faster thing if i make 300 dollars or 200 dollars, i'm good with that i don't need the that so can you elaborate on that because i think that's something i i, I, I could i could i could drop three thousand dollars on that and then take it over there and make 200 bucks i'm happy with that you know what I'm saying? Good I luck. can't sit on a car right now. You know, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? One of my contracts just got let go. So at the end of the day, now I was just fired for a whole week because one of my contractors, um, they lost the contract on my truck, so I got let go. So I had to, if I would have already jumped into the car business when he wanted me to jump into it, I would I already hit my savings. I would have been like, damn, now I got to. Dip and dies, and I would have been worse or whatever worse. You know, luckily I found a new contract. I'm back on, but um, I ran across this, so definitely I'm running across. I ran across my man talking on the TikTok about that, so now I'm. On Yo, the, the worst thing man. you can do is go get your wholesale license. That's the worst thing. Listen, I've been hustling cars for 13 years, right? Consistently. Now it hasn't always been under my own dealership. I failed at one dealership. I got kicked out of the auction for being an asshole. But um, business to business, right? It's really hard because you got to think about it like this. Every dealer has access to buy from the same auction you can buy from. So you're saying, I'm going to find a better price on a better quality vehicle, and then I'm going to go sell it to a dealer. That shit is hard. It's so hard. It's damn near impossible. When you go to the well, auction. I did it. Of course. There's always the one-off. Remember, that's what I hate about him. Well, the I exception is not the rule. And, 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 and you know I do it. Do you know what the crazy thing is? He bought it. What do you mean? The one guy who did it, you bought it. Bought what? Oh, the guy we met? Yes. Yeah, he's a wholesaler. He's a real wholesaler. He's been doing it for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? I bought his truck. We met him at the auction. Right? He paid six grand for it. He paid $6,000 for a truck that I paid $14,000 for. Right? Yo, but he's missing it. The guy took a shot in the dark. The truck was an in-op. He bought it, put a battery, and the truck worked. That is so far and few. But this, he did it. He did it. 100%. Did, did it. it. He's on my so TikTok. He did. follows me. I bought his truck for real. I bought it off ACV. But, yo, the fact is, the f that you can't talk to him. Listen, he That's knows not, nothing about the he, car business. He did it. He, he did drives it. a Nissan Titan. I got I to gotta find that nick. I got to I gotta find it. I, he, yo, he drives a it. Nissan Titan. That tells you he doesn't know nothing about the car business. I got nothing. It. He should have bought a Toyota it. or a Ram. My man did it. He copped it. That means you could do it. You just got to take your time. You know, you might lose a couple of hundreds. You might lose. You might not sell it. There's no other avenue for sale. No, nah, well, 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 depending on type of depending on the type of cars vehicles he's buying. No, but if you if you only get a wholesale license, you can't sell to anybody but a dealer. Correct. So you can't retail it. So if no dealer wants it, what do you do? You're stuck with it. You can't do nothing with the car. Nothing. That's true, though. But <laughs> legally, you can't you do nothing. Buy a truck. You, you can't even keep it for yourself. You buy a truck, though. If you buy a truck. Nine times out of ten, you're gonna sell a truck. No, not not not, not even the slightest. Think about it. I bought a truck. I can't sell. Right? I'm a dealer. I can't sell it to a dealer. I can't sell it to a customer. How? Because, yo, it's just the time of the year. Sometimes it sits for a long time. Yo, dealers only buy from wholesalers who have amazing deals. And to get an amazing deal, in my experience, you have to have large pockets. Right? You need to buy something that's worth 20 grand for 7 grand. Fix it. Own it for 10 grand. And hope you get 14 grand. Because dealers don't like buying from wholesalers. They do not. That's a fact. So, in my opinion... If you're going to get any type of license to sell cars, go get your retail license. Why? Because one, you'll have a regular dealer tag. You're not going to have the orange transport plate, so you can park anywhere. Two, 
You can sell to customers. That's where the bread and butter is. Yo, selling cars at the auction, if you're not a big wholesaler, is damn near impossible. You're going to get a low CR. You're going to get a late run number. You're not going to make any money. You're just not, right? They're going to tear your cars apart. They're going to nitpick you. And then it's going to say Nate the Great Auto Sales, right? Motherfuckers are going to be, who the fuck is Nate? Nobody wants to buy cars from you. If you haven't been in the business for years or you're not plugged, Go get retail. Retail's easy. Retail's fun. It comes with its headaches. You just got to cross your T's and dot your I's. Make sure you tell the customer, hey, this is as is. Make sure you show them the Carfax and the auto check. Hey, this is what you're buying, right? Don't last minute or later on, I should have, would have, could have, right? No, no, no. Let them test drive it. When they ask you, hey, is it a good car? You know what you say? I don't know. Go ahead and check. You tell me. Because anything you say, they're going to use against you. It's just like going to jail, right? But... Don't do that shit wholesale shit. That's stupid, bro. I'm still going to look into it, though. But, you know. Look, I told him I'll put him on my license. I'll charge him 200 bucks a car. He can flip cars. We'll open title it. We'll make it happen for him. But, you know, Nate is hard-headed. You guys are going to get to learn a lot about him. I'm you know? running into it. Like I said, man, I ran into a little problem. And at the end of the day, you know, you got to keep pushing. If I put a lot of, you know, decent amount of money in right now, I'd have been crying. You know, but. He ain't telling you the truth. He had nine write-ups. That's why he lost his, his little write-up. Yeah. How many, how many <laughs> fucking infractions did you have? So they, so he said, but naturally I ain't got it. He had nine infractions it's and he was surprised. Just, I was surprised they let you. It's, it's just a way, instead of just saying, yo, he lost the contract, he came up with sudden other excuse. But yeah, if it was facts, then I wouldn't be able to hop on another joint and keep it going with the same thing, so. He's a hustler. We got a lot of stories. This is the introductory. I'm Rob the Car Guy. This is Nate the Great. You know it. It's our first episode, Gubbles. Support us. Um, we got merch. It's $35.99, I think. You know, we don't got a website for it, but like, subscribe, follow us on TikTok. I'm Rob the Car Guy. He's Nate the Great, baby. 600. He doesn't tell you it's Nate the Great 600. It's crazy. You know, but we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to answer questions. I'm going to give you a lot of information about becoming a dealer, buying and selling cars, the things I do, the people I deal with. You know, you're going to hear all the shenanigans, all the cockapooey. It ain't all about business, too. Let's, let's get this out the window. It ain't all about business. You know, this is pop off right there. We're going with that, but it's going to be crazy. It's going to be fun. You're going to hear us argue. You're going to see us. Look, this is my little trophy. I got that when I became middleweight champion. And just so y'all motherfuckers keep talking shit, I have AirPods. I found them. But see no evil. Speak no evil. We out.